especially uh, honorable venerables and friends thank you so much and good morning it's great to be here so i would like to also thank the organizing committee for giving me the opportunity to share some of my research work with you so my research was i was uh, trying to find out how the sound is being used in Buddhist practices, especially in Sri Lanka. So I found out there are two devices that use in uh, sound uh, in Buddhist practices. First is the sound generators, and there are so many sound generators like drums and gongs and bells. But in this context, I would like to talk about this uh, woodfish instrument, which I borrowed from my wife. And I promised her that I will not break it during my testing. <laughs> I hope that I did it. Okay. And there are so many sizes of this instrument, but uh, this is the only thing I could find. And after this conference, yeah, yeah, yes, I would like to study on a big one, but we couldn't find any any like a size bigger in Sri Lanka. So I'll be traveling around to China to find a bigger one, and then do more study on this instrument. It's a fascinating one. And the other type of device is the acoustic resonator. I will discuss a little bit later on this one. And we can see these resonators with respect to stupas and temples constructions in Sri Lanka and around the world as well. So my research I will be only talking about in Sri Lankan context. So, okay, here we go. To outline my talk, first I will briefly introduce what is the acoustic resonator and then I will discuss brief history of this resonator usage in Sri Lanka, especially from Buddhist perspective and then the measurement method that we use to measure the acoustic resonances and then I will go to the stupa and temples and then finish it off with this instrument acoustic characteristics so that's about the talk, I will try to do it within 15 minutes, thank you <coughs> so just to introduce what is uh, acoustic resonator it's a fluid filled uh, volume that constrained with some kind of solid volume solid surface basically we can find these ones occurring naturally as well, so man-made and obviously it's a cave, naturally occurring one and a man-made one, it's a dome shape or a like, uh, room like this uh, The acoustic resonators are primarily used for amplifying the effects of the sound generated by the acoustic devices something like this woodfish instrument or the drum In Sri Lanka, uh, when I did the research, I found out these resonators go back up to 3rd century BC, so it's a very long time ago people have been using this and you might see this one uh, picture everywhere in the most uh, Buddhist uh, Supa context this is the great uh, Supa of Sri Lanka, which is Ruvana Desire I had my doubt when I was uh, going through its construction according to the ancient text of Sri Lanka and you can find the information on the YouTube as well as available how it was constructed first when they constructed it, they put a metal plate on the foundation, on top of the metal plate, they put uh, pink quartz crystals. And then they mix it with... Thank you. Oh, this is a bigger one. Great. <laughs> okay. Um, so, what they have done is they put pink quartz crystal on top of that, and then they put another metallic layer on top of that. So, it was very interesting actually, what are they trying to make over there as well. Most, uh, we use pink parts in uh, digital electronics and semiconductor uh, electronics to make crystals in your watch, the crystal oscillator in your watch. So most probably it might have been a piezoelectric electric generator back then. But how to resonate this structure was very interesting, how they have achieved it, may have achieved it back then. On top of that, they have put long hollow vases. Anybody who is uh, familiar with these resonators might know when you put a hollow tube, it acts as a Helmholtz resonator. So it can do the vibrations with that. So how to get this vibration into the stupa, they might have done by using drumming or chanting. But we couldn't find out any acoustic cavities, acoustic resonators of modern construction of this stupa. But I found out in the Sri Lankan archives, the work done by Professor Pavel in 1946, explaining there was a, a acoustic resonator around these stupas. So in the second figure, you can see the stupa in the middle and then acoustic dome-shaped resonator around it. So that might would have been the acoustic resonator cave, but the, uh, most of this construction have been destroyed over time and we couldn't find any of the resonators in ancient time there. And, but we are lucky in Sri Lanka, we have two stupas have this construction still preserved 
One is in uh, Kothmalai in Sri Lanka, and the other one is in Kolkata. So my studies, I used the Kothmalai one. This is a Kothmalai uh, uh, stupa. It's about 200 feet wide and about 100 feet high. And inside, thank you, inside, uh, there is a hollow cavity. And what is interesting over here is this surface. And there is like an arc over here, and it's a hollow as well. So when the drumming is happening, the sound wave comes and comes into the uh, acoustic cavity and fill that arc-shaped hollow cavity act as a filter. And it does not let some of the frequencies to come into the uh, stupa. So it's selective, very selective over there. So this is the one that we use for our measurements. I will share with you the results later. And the other sort of acoustic resonator we can find is are the temples. So in the temple, uh, Sri Lankan all the temples uh, constructed during the Anuradhapura area and the Polonaru area all destroyed now. We couldn't find any of the acoustic chambers. But we could find uh, the modern constructions about 500 years ago. We can find the acoustic uh, cavities in those temples. But what I want to show over here is very interesting uh, cave in India. This is called the Elora Cave. And this is the Buddhist uh, cave. And in the Elora Caves, there are three religions in a one place. You can find one is the Buddhism, and the other one is Jainism, other one is the Hinduism. All three religions in the same uh, cave complex. It's very interesting. And the oldest one is this one, the Buddhist cave, which was constructed around 650 CE time. And it's called the Vishwakarma cave, or the architect of the gods cave. So at those times, the Buddha was considered as the architect of the whole universe at that time. So you can see nice uh, resonance cavity on this one as well. But when you consider about the temple construction, usually temple construction have two resonance cavities. One in the middle, as shown in this uh, other photo, the blue and the yellow one, and the outer cavity. So inside the cavity, we are not allowed to go in and then take the measurements because a lot of uh, relics as well as the Buddhist statues are there. So we did our testing on the outside and we got pretty interesting results. And how to measure this? There are two methods we can use. One is the impulse response. We can give an impulse that consists of all the audio frequencies and then check for the filtering. And the other method is exciting the cavities with a single tone and then check for the reverberation time. I'm not going to go into more time, uh, more explains on this one because it's very easy technique. So the longer the time, the better the frequency for the activity for the resonance. Okay? So we use the T60 dB uh, uh, measurement and then take the times and then go the resonance frequencies use, using this method the monotone excitation method, and we excite the cavities with 20 hertz to 1 kilohertz, and logarithmically sweeping. So these are some of our results. And the stupas, we observed 130 hertz, resonance fundamental mode. We could see on a Mahavali stupa in Sri Lanka. And in temples, we have selected about 16 temples. We were not limited to the uh, Buddhist temples only. We were also checking the Hindu temples as well. So what we have found out very interesting uh, set of frequencies in these uh, temples. Uh, we found out 432 hertz and 520 hertz, the fundamental mode resonances. Uh, anybody can tell me about the significance of these two frequencies? In today's context? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, these ones are used for high healings and circadio. These are also for the circadio sets as well. So we observe these two frequencies and 432 is like feeling better when you go inside those temples. And some temples have specific purposes and some were built for the uh, healing and the other one for the good relationships. Like five, in the good relationship temples we observe 528 hertz and the good healing temples we observe 432 hertz. That was very interesting. And with that, I would like to take you to the Woodfish instrument, which I bought from, of course, from White. Okay. Okay, that's that sound. And let's check this one. I haven't tried this one before, so let's see. Oh my goodness. Okay. Right. <laughs> I definitely want to check the soundtrack of this one. Okay. So, Woodfish instrument, like that you can see, is made out of wood, and it's a very interesting material. As engineers, we still do not know the fully uh, material properties and the behavior of the wood still. We're still struggling to understand it. 
Okay, but people in ancient times they really knew about the properties of these instruments. So we can see that this has a solid surface like the wood, and then it has a fluid cavity, which is the air over here. In mathematical sense, it's uh, this is a structural acoustic couple problem, which we can model by using nonlinear wave equation given over there. Please don't uh, get scared of that equation. I just want to put over there to show that how complex this one is in mathematical and physics terms. Okay? And then there is no analytical solution for this equation to solve this one in computer. So we have to use numerical techniques. And then we use the numerical formulation of this one, which is given by this big equation on the bottom. Okay? And then we can construct this one inside the computer and then simulate it. Apply different forces and then see how the resonance modes of this instrument. Okay? So these are some of the results. The first graph shows the audio track of this one. Okay? And the second one shows the frequency spectrum of this one. You can see that it has a fundamental mode, the big peak, and then it has a lot of resonance happening as well. It's a multi multiple of the fundamental mode. And when we closely check, we can see that those ones are odd harmonics. That shows this is a very high complex nonlinear instrument, which we have to study more to understand the full detail of it. Okay? And this one to your right shows the finite element model of this instrument, which we have done in computer simulation. And we have come very close to the computer simulation and the actual data. The measured fundamental mode is about 1.4 kilohertz, and our simulation result shows 1.6 kilohertz. Maybe because we still do not understand the full property and the dynamics of this instrument, we are still doing the modification to our models to understand this more clearly. So with that, I would like to end up my presentation. Thank you very much. And that's all.